Right here at Electronica 2016, we have been welcomed uh, to the microchip uh, booth, or I should say the stand is pretty impressive. And uh, we are talking, I'm talking to Lucio Di Giazio. Um, Lucio, we've spoken before, um, and you are going to tell us a bit, my, you're going to tell me a bit, and the audience of course, a bit about the new things happening with microchip and Atmel and so on, which is very interesting and has been a very hot subject on every forum, you know, we have seen, and it's been a very lively uh, discussion. So we want to hear some, something from you in that regard. Um, it's, it, it's, it seems to me, uh, Lucio, that, you know, uh, microchip has always been uh, platform oriented, uh, has built a platform, strong support, if you can call that, um, as opposed to concentrating on cores, which many other companies uh, do. Uh, with the introduction, you know, of the Atmel uh, products, uh, does that mean that uh, microchip is, is, is becoming core agnostic? Yeah, well, we, we are core agnostic more than ever. Um, so the addition of all the products and portfolio from, from, from Atmel is, is uh, just expanding on the idea. We, we always had, um, you know, continuous investment in 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and we tried, as you said correctly, uh, we tried to create a platform so where the user can actually choose the right engine for the application, yep. right? And so now more than ever, we have more options available. So now you can choose if you want ARM cores, many of them. Mm -hmm. You can choose AVR cores if you want to continue developing 8-bit. And there's just the more the merrier, the better yeah. for the customers. So Show a few, uh, yes. Lucio. Uh, yeah, so for example, yeah. uh, here in this booth, uh, in this station here, uh -huh. we have 10 stations. Uh, at this one, we are actually showing 8-bit uh, products. And side by side, we are promoting AVR core-based uh, devices and PIC core-based devices. Is 8-bit still going strong, Lucio? Oh, very much, very much so. Uh, you know, the, the everybody has been saying for 20 years that 8-bit was going away, and yet, uh, you know, sales are increasing year after year. And we, we, we have consistency of purpose there. I have to say, as microchip, we, we continue to innovate, to put investments in 8-bit. So, so for, for many, many applications, very low cost, very uh, cost sensitive, I should say, applications. And um, even in IoT today, you know, uh, connected things. Uh, <laughs> you are wearing one. <laughs> I'm wearing something. You know, an 8-bit can be perfectly uh, suitable for the application. M many engineers are perfectly happy with yes. that. And it's absolutely astounding what they still produce with 8-bit uh, uh, microcontrollers. Yeah, the power yeah. seems to be uh, an endless and they even compete, they make fun of it, to compete with like 32-bit products. Absolutely, absolutely. They are easy to use. That's the best thing I can say, really. They are robust. They are low power. So, you know, uh -huh. unless you have specific reasons, we don't want to force people to migrate to yeah. anything else. Okay. If they're happy with 8-bit, we got plenty of new 8-bits for them. Yeah. So, Lucio, can, can we look forward to seeing, uh, you know, both the MPS and the, uh, the ARM cores also remaining available for some time? Uh, with you for microchip? Oh yeah, absolutely. MIPS and, and, and ARM are two type of cores uh, that, you know, we see uh, both valuable in different applications. Uh -huh. So really, um, you know, there are applications where the MIPS core has some advantages, maybe in graphics, maybe we've seen audio applications. It's got extra performance, extra care. Lucio, can you draw a line also between typical users of MIPS and typical users of ARM? Do you see a divide already? Or, I don't think or a transition? Yeah, I don't think there's a sharp line. I think there is plenty of choice again for the customers, but we, we see that in the choice falls on the MIPS more in certain graphic applications because the history of MIPS. And maybe in other applications we see more ARM and it's it's perfectly fine. It's up to the customer to choose and we want to give them this option and yep. uh, let them free to choose. Yep. Really. So, so now you've shown us some products which uh, our viewers like very much, don't you guys? Uh, the hardware stuff and the, the software, uh, Lucio, we shouldn't forget, of course. Uh, the, you know, we've talked about platforms, the support items for microchip and the AI, um, Atmel products, the famous MPLAB X and the Studio 7. Yes. 
what's the what's what's, what's happening? happening? What's happening? <laughs> what's ha what's coming? Yeah. <laughs> what's exist? What's existing? How are you doing with the products? Yeah. Can the, can people remain confident that the stuff remains available? Because yeah. they are very you know, with the transition to Atmel or the acquisition of Atmel. Um, there have been some rumors, you know, they're going to drop some products or some, they're going to drop my favorite support platform. No, no, no. Actually, very good question. Yes, we want to absolutely make sure that everybody understands. Uh, we didn't spend that amount of money to do the acquisition of Atma to cancel products. Uh, that's not going to happen. That's uh, nice to hear. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. We've never done that in all the previous acquisitions. You look at the history of Microchip, we've done 17 acquisitions in the last eight years. It's that's exactly what we have not done. We actually continue to expand and invest in, in our products. So, but when you speak specifically about development environment, that, that's a very touchy subject for yeah. many developers. I know they trust their tools, they are very familiar with it, and they don't like like major changes. Yes. They do like upgrades, but not major changes. Absolutely. So, so now we want to make sure that everybody understands Studio is there to stay. Uh, it will continue to support all the ARM products and the AVR products as it was in the past. We will continue to improve it. So we will continue to enhance it, but it will stay. There's not going to be any disruption there. And on the other side, on the PIC side, we will continue with MPLAB X. MPLAB X has its own advantages. It's cross-platform. It covers all the PICs and DS PICs and PIC32s and so on. So it, it, it will stay. We'll continue to invest in that. It totally makes sense to continue the, with both tool chains uh, full steam ahead. So no worries for the developers. Confidence, that's what we like to hear. A, 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 a buzzword, Lucio, and changing the subject, but a buzzword here at the show and in the industry in general is component obsolescence. You know, components suddenly disappearing. Yes. Can you uh, tell us a bit about, you know, engineers are very afraid that some key component in their project or in their product is going to disappear yeah. from one day to the other and they have big problems. Um, in terms of the Atmel and microchip ICs, the hardware, what, how's your, what's your viewpoint on, on obsolescence? Again, very good question. Uh, so, the, the, um, you know, we, I can tell you a story. We actually ran a survey among our customers and we figured out that um, uh, on average they were spending 30% of their R&D budget just in redesigning existing product, redoing it because some part or another in the product, in the bill of material, had been obsoleted. And so they were literally wasting 30% of their R&D. That is a lot. That's a lot of money, absolutely. And the accountants don't like it. No, uh, I mean, uh, imagine if you can actually uh, free up that uh, R&D time and, and budget and actually make it available for the customer to innovate, mm -hmm. right? To actually create new product to increase revenue for the company. That, so that's what we do in Microchip. We, we call it actually customer-driven obsolescence. So as long as we see the customers are buying, are ordering our products, we keep manufacturing them. There is no obsolescence and we have a history. You do not dictate the obsolescence. Yeah, you, you watch the customer demand and adjust your supply, so to speak, of the products. I had, I had this week, I had a request for quotes for products that were actually designed 20 years ago. 16F84? Yes, of course. Uh, you said it. And F877. And I had a C7. Explorer 16. Yeah, these are all products. Yes, these are all products that were designed 16, 17, 20 years ago. I'm happy to quote them. I'm happy to sell them. I'm happy to tell the customers we continue to manufacture them because it, it's up to them to drive the innovation. We want them to spend their time and focus on designing new stuff. And we don't want to force them to spend time just redesigning all projects just because we obsolete parts. So that's our policy. We've done this for 20 years. We'll continue to do it with all the picks and all the AVRs and ARM products that we have inherited now from Atma. Lucio, thank you very much for the interview. And have a great show.